So my topic is uh, cocoa farm. Right. What is more peaceful than a hot cup of chocolate in a nice heavy rain? How many of you like chocolate? Yes, I like chocolate too. But did you know that Malaysia has a big part on the chocolate history? Chocolate was found in Malaysia. Chocolate farm, the plant was found in Malaysia 200 years ago in the 18th century itself. So it was found in one person's garden. So people, when they track down, they believe that someone has took it from a foreign country and planted it here. So from there, Malaysia has become one of the mass production for chocolates. They produce chocolate and it was a booming industry. Imagine chocolate values equal to a gold. We use chocolate in every, every event, how we use roses and how we use gold. We prioritize these as a very high emotion state. And we Malaysians are the producers of these chocolate farms. There are major six varieties that Malaysians have this chocolate farm. Then what happened? Where are all the chocolate farms now? The moment we commercialize this chocolate farm to earn more money, falls a greater responsibility. When we fail to look into that responsibility and take care and understand that plant, we immediately fail to produce or grow them more. So when they fail to look on how to grow them, they lose interest. Where there, they started to invest their money in durian, palm oil, and rubbers. The transition took place all the chocolate farms were replaced by durian orchards, rubber estates, and palm oil estates. Because the maintenance of a cocoa farm is higher than durian and rubber or uh, palm oil. When you plant a uh, plants, uh, trees that are low maintenance and higher money, immediately we will fall towards that. But is that the only reason? Is that the major reason because of these durian orchards, the palm oils and the rubber estates? Now the cocoa farm is not, no longer here? No, that's not the real reason. The real culprit is called CPB, Cocoa Pod Borer. It's an insect. It's a moth. It's a 7 mm moth, 7 millimeter moth. It's very small. It has its scientific name long as a sentence. I'm not going to try to even attempt that. Okay. It eats the cocoa pod inside. They, some people say it is from the rambutan trees. It's the same moth that destroys rambutans. Okay, never mind. If it's already in Malaysia, Earth must have as an, an alternative production to reduce this moth. But here comes the catch. According to cabby.org, these moths are not natives of Malaysia. They were introduced by an unknown person. So 
when they tracked down how this moth come to Malaysia, they found out it came by Philippines or Indonesia. When they even tracked down why the moths come all the way from Indonesia and Philippines, they found out these two countries have been introduced by these same moth a decade ago. So in 1977, when Malaysia got invested by these moths, people don't know how to treat them because it was a sudden boom. And when this moth eats the cocoa plant, the cocoa pod, it destroys 80 to 90% of their production. They only get 10% from the whole harvest. Imagine, because co producing chocolate powders or chocolate bars is not that easy. It undergoes many different processes. So for them to at least maintain the market level, Malaysians, they started to cut down the processing level, which alternatively reduces the chocolate grade. And it stopped people all over the world, they stopped buying. This not only happened for Malaysia, it also happened for all the countries in Southeast Asia who grow cocoa farm. And after years, the problem is not solved. They give up on chocolate. Malaysia stopped producing chocolate in a mass production. There are still now, there is one farmer, farm is called chocolate concierge. C-O-N-C-I-E-R-G-E, -E. chocolate concierge. It's owned by a Chinese. He says, even if I can't earn much from this chocolate, I don't want these six varieties to extinct. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, Malaysia's chocolates are in endangered species. Not only animals go in endangered species, plants too go in that, uh, in that process. So he said, I don't get a lot of money. I don't get a lot of income, but at least I am a generation. I am holding up, bringing the generation's tradition. I don't want these six chocolates to extinct. So that's why he is still maintaining his farm. True, as I said, chocolate making has a lot of process and if we skip one process, it will ruin. Then if we don't skip, can we mark up to the market price? Still farmers find it hard because of another mediator, which we call transportation. When people want to transport their goods to a big, big factories to make chocolates or chocolate bars, they have to pay them. And the transportations are not cheap. They are very expensive. So in order to maintain the market level, farmers need to furthermore go down on their income, which makes them worthless. They don't feel happy about growing this farm because instead of growing this, making a hardship out of, out of uh, growing these cocoa farms, they just shift to durians and other products because durian weighs more. It gives you more profit and it's less maintenance, as I said. How to stop all this? Don't go down. Don't go further deep, deep down. Don't reduce our quality. Increase. Why are we not shooting? Just because a country fixed the price. This should be the chocolate price. 
all over the world, we need to follow it. No need. If, it, if that's the case, why German chocolates are very, very expensive? Why Belgian chocolates are very, very expensive? Let's go higher. How can we help our fellow chocolate farmers? We can support them by giving them don donations. Usual basic stuff that we can do. We can promote them, talk more about them in social medias, which can bring awareness. We can buy their products, which will support them as well. But further all, more, if you want to take it, take, take the step a bit higher, we can plant our own cocoa tree. Imagine each of one of us, if we have a bigger space in our house, we plant only one tree. Cocoa plant is not going to be super tall. They are shorter than papaya trees and they are exactly like papaya trees. That's why we call them as plants and not trees because they are small. They don't take up so much space. Their roots are not very, very deep. If we plant one cocoa tree, each house, Imagine how many cocoa plants right now we might have planted in one town, one city, and one state, one country. It will increase the cocoa plantation. We don't need to do, for, do that for uh, a commercial or a pro profit thing. We can at least stop them from being extinct. My hot chocolate now is finished. So as the rain. So I think we need to help the farmers to stop the chocolate farm from getting extinct. That's all. Thank you.